We're going to have a few moments before the Lord, before we engage in a corporate prayer. The Lord made some very important statements. We're all people of faith, but we don't have faith in the same God. I'm going to speak for a moment to the biblical narrative. We're going to understand that everything we speak of today is driven by Ephesians 6.12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. watchers descend, cohabitate with women, birthing the Nephilim, the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim are the demons we live with. And the last rebellion is found in Genesis chapter 11. God literally divorces mankind, calls Abram out of Mesopotamia in chapter 12. From chapter 12 through chapter 50, it's God, Abram, and his progeny. What happened to everyone else? In Deuteronomy 32, 8 and 9, we see that God separated humankind and allotted them to the lesser Elohim. In Deuteronomy 4, 19 and 20, we see Moses make a warning. Do not worship those gods that the other nations worship. I want you to know today we're coming to the climax of this war. We have years left, only years left. God is pouring himself out and people say, but Nick, he poured himself out at Pentecost, Acts 2, 4. He did, but that pouring out was specific to a region and a people. Joel 2, 28 says he is pouring himself out today on all flesh. All flesh. I want you to understand, Haggai 2, 9 says that his outpouring in these last days is going to be so much greater than the birthing of the church. Now, Back to Ephesians 6.12. Many, many of you here today are in bondage. Satan has come and he's got so many people in bondage. But listen to what Jesus says in John 10.10. 10. Satan has come to steal, kill and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yes. Satan's come to steal what? I submit to you, you're in possession of something great he wants to steal. Boom. You have life that he wants to snuff out. Yes. Destroy you. Apollo means the word. He wants you in hell. Today, the spirit of the most high God is here to plunder the kingdom of darkness. Do you understand me? Jesus is king. Jesus reigns. Hear my words today. I stand here in the greatest confidence. Why? My soulmate who prayed me through for 30 years has had two seizures in the last two weeks and her heart has stopped. My only child is battling cancer right now. But I can tell you with the greatest confidence, I serve the risen King. Jesus reigns. Don't let Satan steal what's rightfully yours. Do you understand me? You are a child of the Most High God. Satan has blinded your eyes. Do not let him steal what is rightfully yours today. You have a choice to make. The entire biblical narrative begs choice. You're so special before him. I want to share something with you before we pray. I heard a testimony from Howard Pittman, who's now with the Lord. Howard Pittman has a near-death experience, and he dies. He's before God in heaven. He wants to come back. He doesn't want to die. He speaks to God and he says this. Lord, I've served you all my life. I've been a pastor. I've adopted children. I've done many good things. And he waits silently for the Lord to speak. In this moment, the Lord speaks to him. 
with a voice of thunder. And he says to him, your faith is in vain. It's dead. Your works are in vain. You have served me like a Laodicean Christian. What makes you think I'll accept that? Howard is chilled. He can't believe it. He's lying there before this holy God that we serve. But God now speaks to him differently. Listen to me. You have a father in heaven who weeps over your being lost. You have a father in heaven who spoke to Howard and Howard says, I could feel his heartbeat. I could feel him hurting over me and my decisions. We have an opportunity here today before the Holy One who reigns. He loves you so much, he's given you the gift of free choice. Your choice will determine where you live for all eternity in heaven as a child of the Most High or in hell because you made a choice to live as a rebel, as a, in rebellion. Join me and every other volunteer here today. Join me and my wife in heaven. Join us. Don't let Satan steal what God has rightfully provided for you. The Spirit of God is here today. Do not let him steal what's yours. Listen to me. Patricia prayed for me for over three decades. I was lost. December 30th, 2010, I got home. I almost took my own life. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, this will be your eternity without me. He let me walk and see and experience hell for three months. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Don't let Satan steal what he's provided for you. Jesus has suffered greatly. I'm reminded of the words of Jim Caviezel who made the movie as he was on the cross. And Jesus spoke to him and Jesus said, Jim, they don't love me. They don't love me. Open your hearts to the Holy Spirit as we get ready to go to him in prayer. Bow your heads for a moment. God is here. We have very little time left. This is part of the outpouring. He is going to do great and mighty things to the army that he's raising right now. He is busy. You've never seen as much demonic activity on the earth as we have today. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He is raising up our latter-day army. And if you want in, if you want to be part of this, by golly, he'll use you. He'll bless you. He'll empower you. Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In 2 Timothy 2.4, Paul tells Timothy, Be not entangled again with the affairs of this life that you might please him who's called you to be a soldier. Let me make a point. It's critical. 2 Corinthians 6.17, Come out of her, my people. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and be to you a God, and you'll be to me sons and daughters. We refuse to separate from the world. Unfortunately, our Bibles have one word for world. In the Greek, they're ten. And this is critical that we understand this right now. Galatians 6.14 You've been crucified to the world, and the world to you. James 4.4 4, If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. What does that mean? It means this. Cosmos. If you've embraced the values, the culture, the system of the world, you are an enemy of God. You were crucified to that. You're in the world, but not of the world. Christianity has not divorced yourself from what God hates. You have to come out. There's very little time left. We're going to shortly see Washington in riot and burning. States will secede from America. Everything in the scriptures have come to pass or just about there. We are going home as a body soon. Join us. Do not let Satan steal what God provided for you on that glorious cross. Let's lower our heads, please. Thank you. Father God, 
We come to you in keeping with your word. You tell us in Hebrews 10, 19, we have the right to come in the blood of the Lamb, the risen one, the king, the conqueror, the one who rules. Father, you could snap a finger and everything would be as you want it to be. But we know, 1 Peter 1, 7, that the trying of our faith, being much more precious than gold and silver that perishes, is, Father, what's at work here, Father God. You want us to freely give ourselves to you. You will not compel us. A just God can only judge what decisions we make outside of anyone compelling us. We have a great gift in making these decisions. Today, your eternity is before you. You will fashion it with the decision you make. You will choose life in Christ or you will by default choose death. Satan is a great liar, a deceiver. He never let go of the lie he told Adam and Eve. He wanted them to take from the tree of knowledge and they did. And listen to me. Our seminaries don't teach life. Jesus says in John 5, 39 and 40, You are they who search the scriptures. For in them you think you have life, but you won't come to me that I might give you life. He alone is life. Christ. Union with him. What do our seminaries teach? Knowledge. The same lie Satan gave Adam and Eve is the same lie. Listen. Revelation 13, 7 through 9. That Satan... Satan has conquered saints? That's what the scriptures say. How has he conquered today? Our doctrines are doctrines of demons. That's how he's conquered the church today. Our church in America is enfeebled. But we here today stand before God Almighty. He will not let go. He's going to have his way. He beckons you to come before the cross today. Receive the freedom and the life.